A basic premise in the doctrine of man's earthly dominion is that God gave his delegated authority to human beings on this planet, and God made only man as a fleshly being with a soul. Demons, which most theologians believe are fallen angels, have a soul or spirit, but no body. Animals have a body and mind, but no eternal soul or spirit. Man is uniquely made in God's image as a triune being, spirit, soul, mind, will, feelings, and emotions, and body. God gave dominion to man on the earth to rule as his region because man was made in his image as a triune being. So only a triune man, made out of the dust of the earth, can have dominion under God. Demons cannot take on flesh, there is nowhere in the Bible that says that they can. Of course, we know that angels, both heavenly and fallen, can appear in human form, but they remain spirit beings only. Also, in Genesis chapter 1, God says in verse 24, let the earth produce living creatures according to their kinds. A fish cannot produce with a bird, and a man cannot produce with an animal or a demon. All creatures on the earth produce only according to their kind. According to Genesis 6 verse 4, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. The sons of God saw that the daughters of man were beautiful. The Hebrew for the term sons of God is Ben Elohim, which means literally sons of God. A key of biblical interpretation is to allow the scripture to interpret itself. People fall into error when they try to make the Bible say something to fit their particular doctrinal position, when the text does not say it. In this case, the text simply says, Sons of God, which is a designation for humans. There is nowhere in the Bible where demons are called sons, and especially not sons of God. There are three passages in Job that refer to the sons of God that seem to indicate that these were godly angels, since mankind had not received access to God's presence before the resurrection of Christ, and demons had been expelled from God's presence according to Job 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them, according to Job 2 verse 1. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. In Genesis 6 verse 3, God says, My spirit will not remain with mankind forever, because they were corrupt. It says, mankind, not a mix of man and demon. In verse 4 it says the Nephilim were powerful men. Again, not powerful demon men. And in verse 7, the Lord said, I will wipe off the face of the earth, man whom I created. Here we see an explicit reference to who and what God intended to bring judgment to man. God says nothing about demons or fallen angels here. That which God created, man, would be destroyed with the exception of righteous Noah. God alone is the creator. Demons and angels do not have the power to create, so they could not have recreated or reproduced with human beings. If these were a separate race created by demons reproducing with men, which would not be something God created, then I believe God would have made it clear that the demon men were being destroyed along with the regular men. 
but God only says that he will destroy man who he created. If the demons were reproducing offspring with humans then, why don't we see any other instance of this in the Bible, and why aren't they doing it today? The answer, I believe, is that it simply isn't possible. We need to be careful that we don't try to force the Bible to say what it doesn't actually say. This is how cults and false religions are started and grow. Instead, we must use proper biblical interpretation that lets the Bible say what it says, adding nothing and taking nothing away. God is sovereign, and he set the parameters for reproduction in Genesis chapter 1, and no one, and nothing can reproduce outside of his plan. This should give us great comfort. We can see from Matthew 22 verse 30 and Luke 20 verse 34 to 36 that angels do not marry, but this does not mean they can't take human form and have relations. I am not advocating that they do have sexual relations with people, but I am simply stating that we cannot assert either position from this passage, especially when the Bible tells us that people have entertained angels without even knowing it, Hebrew 13 verse 2. This means that angels can take on human appearance so convincingly that they can't be distinguished from people. If this is the case, then it would seem logical that an angel, a fallen one, could imitate a human physical form including the sexual organs. If fallen angels have sex with people, this could be how it would happen. On the other hand, I see no biblical support for such a manifestation of fallen angels in human form. Therefore, we are still left without an absolute answer. Can angels have sex with people? We don't know. However, the term sons of God also refers to Christians in the New Testament, as Galatians 3 verse 26 states, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Since the question at hand deals with an Old Testament scripture, we must examine the context of that particular scripture to see how it is used. Whichever the case, we do not know the abilities of angels. Even if these sons of God are angels, we are not told exactly how they had offspring with the women. While it seems implied, it doesn't plainly say that the angels have sex. Given that they are very powerful and intelligent creatures, it is possible that they could manifest themselves as humans. This has been verified in scripture as we see from the following passage, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing it. Hebrews 13 verse 2 since they can appear in human form unbeknownst to people, it seems that a fallen angel manifesting itself in human form would be able to have sexual relations with a person. Still, showing that angels have appeared convincingly in human form is a far cry from proving that angels have sex with humans, so it comes down entirely to how one reads Genesis 6 and even if the sons of God are angels there, what one assumes about the mechanics of how it happened. Again, we just don't know. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment your